in your spirit. <laughs> yes, good morning, good morning. Woo, hallelujah. Teach us. Teach us, dear Lord. Yes, good morning, good morning. We are so glad. Oh, my God. So somebody said two hours of sleep. <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. And we give God praise for what he is doing in the midst of us. Amen. Good morning to my Instagram family. God bless you. Come on in. Good morning, Zoomers. God bless you as well. So glad to see everybody this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Yvonne Reynolds. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning to those of you dynamic disciples. Hey, chocolate sisters, I love it. God bless you. Come on in. Lady Tanisha, good morning. Officially Reverend Martin. I love it. Iris Mitchell, good morning. Thank you all for being here with us this morning. Y'all know what's going on. You know what's going down in 48 hours. No, 24. <laughs> oh my God. God is so, so good. Come on in. God bless you. Thank you for joining the School of Holy Spirit. I am Bishop Colette Gervon, and I am a pneumatologist. Oh my God. And what we are doing is learning to listen to the flow of Holy Spirit. Welcome to those of you on free conference call as well. Thank God for those of you that have continued to join us. Next month will be uh, literally three years. April will be celebrating all month. School of Holy Spirit, Pentecost in a pandemic, three years. It will be our third year anniversary. And we have been here basically every day, Monday through Friday. And we have been teaching on Holy Spirit consistently. So much so that the language of the body of Christ is changing. Uh, that you actually can hear uh, people talking about Holy Spirit so many more times than what we've ever heard before. And I know that that is an impact of you here at the School of Holy Spirit and those of you that share it on your pages. People are actually talking about Holy Spirit. People are actually moving in spirit language, talking about Holy Spirit in their sermons. Uh, there was a time you didn't even mention it. <laughs> but now we see Holy Spirit is moving in so many marvelous ways. Uh, among the people of God here on Facebook, social media, uh, people are talking about Holy Spirit. And I believe that that is directly related uh, to what God is using us to do in this place. Shout out to my sister Ruthie, who fell asleep on me last night. <laughs> she crunched so many numbers. <laughs> she said, forget it, her body just said, Ruthie, are you sleep? <laughs> But we're crunching numbers and we're making it do what it do. I want to thank you for those of you that have reached out to us and you said, listen, I'm coming even at the last minute. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Come on in, people of God. Come on in. I'm sorry. I do apologize, but I don't want to be <laughs> blowing my nose on camera, but praise the Lord. Hey, I'm so glad that you all are here. Leonard Staples, Wendy, good morning, sis. Good morning, Overseer Ryan. Martha Johnson, Tom Williams, Angela Marshall, the woman Sarah, Pastor Rita Field, Valencia Clark, <laughs> Juanita Campbell, God bless you, Sonia McIntosh, Camilla Cook, God bless you. Keep coming on in. Good morning, coming up the timeline. Valerie Thomas, thank you, Lenita Jenkins, Juan Sue. Praise God. God is so, so good. Pastor, pastors, pastors, leaders. You've been so kind. For those of you that have sent Patreon ads and virtual advertisement, digital ads, again, shout out to my sister for that amazing idea. Thank you so much. Janice Ford, a Miss Carrie. Come on, collection. Let's go. Hallelujah. Many of them, I love you. Good morning. This is School of Holy Spirit. And we are doing what the Lord has commanded us to do. What a glorious day it is in the body of Christ, in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Teach us to enter in. Yes. Hey, Sherry Jackson Collin is my niece. Praise God. Good morning. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. As you are coming in, Zoomers, listen. Ooh, listen, listen, listen. I'm reading from my new Bible, 
the Spirit Field Life Bible. This is a uh, Jack Hayford uh, version of the scriptures. And oh my God, just reading through it as we go back to Galatians, just reading through it and what it, oh my God, his translations are spot on. Awesome Bible, Pastor Jefferson. Awesome. Oh my God. And there's so much uh, that he talks about in terms of Holy Spirit's influence. This whole Bible is really basically about Holy Spirit and how uh, Holy Spirit moves uh, in the midst of the people of God. And so it's an amazing, amazing Bible. If you have it, it comes in all of the versions. I have it in the NIV. I think that's my favorite translation is the New International, although the voice and others, I was listening to uh, Pastor Dr. Anika this morning, She, uh, they use the voice and other translations, they're all good, the message by where Pastor uh, Wendy and others who help me with that text, I have the New Living Translation, uh, but I, I prefer, I think personally, the NIV, and that's probably because I went to school with NIV and was introduced long, those many years ago <laughs> at William Tindale Bible College uh, to uh, the new international version and had to uh, exegete it in Greek. So uh, I think that's probably the pain, <laughs> the trauma. <laughs> so thank God for that. But I, I was just reading it. Uh, so get your paper Bibles. Hold the Bible up one more time. Okay, Linda, it is the spirit field. Can you see it? Light Bible. The New Spirit Field Light Bible. And it is by Jack Hayford. You got it? All right. The New Spirit Field Light Bible. Let me do it here. The New Spirit Field Light Bible. Let me do it to my Zoomers as well. New Spirit Field Light Bible. And it is Thomas Nelson that has published it. New Spirit Field Light, Hillary. The New Spirit Field Light Bible. Get it. Everybody get it. You have the King James Version of the same Bible pad? Good. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you, Evangelist, for keeping, keeping me together until tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. LaShawn, uh, Miko, congratulations on all of your business efforts. Uh, when do you have one in the KJV? I'm sure the notes are the same uh, in terms of the notations. It is amazing. Absolutely. So look, let's go to Galatians 5. I want to talk about this for just a moment. And then we're going to jump back to Proverbs 30. So grab that. I want to get right into the lesson today because there's a lot of material uh, to cover. Praise the Lord. And I'm excited. <laughs> Watch this now. Galatians 5. Praise God. Uh, and, and we are looking at uh, verse uh, 13, reading all the way from 13 uh, through 21. Now, let's talk about this terminology, inherit the kingdom of God. I want to talk about that language. Good morning, Dean Overseer. God bless you, Eladia. Good morning, ready, ready. Uh, listen, Pat Nicholson. Thank you, Rhonda Dooley. Thank. Okay, she's got it. KJB. Sharon Lowry. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Chris, let's go. Let's go. Now, when when Scripture talks about the kingdom of God, I, I want you to understand this. <laughs> no, you're not Eladia, and if you do, I'm gonna be mad. I want you to be you, your true self. What is the kingdom of God? So when John chapter three, and I want to go there because I think it's important. When we talk about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, what are we talking about? When Jesus introduces the kingdom of God to Nicodemus, what is the kingdom of God? Dr. Aqua, welcome joining. Thank you, Chaplain, for joining us. All of my, my family on Instagram, you got to get, get your folks in because I'm about we're about to go there. All right. The kingdom of God. And 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 Jesus introduces uh Nicodemus in John chapter number three, 
says you must be born again. Look at Nick, look at John 3 and 3. Verily, verily, I, I tell you, very truly, I tell you, that no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. I think this is a very, very, very misinterpreted and poorly preached text because there's so much bigger going on in this conversation uh, than just the new birth. Watch this. How can anyone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. And Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and born of spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. <laughs> Woo, you got to understand this because it will begin to make sense, I hope. That's the teacher's hope, right? When we talk about why Holy Spirit must change us, why Holy Spirit must reshape us, reform, reconstruct us, regene us. You have to understand this. You have to understand the kingdom of God. And it says uh, very truly, verse five, I say to you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and spirit. Now, I want you to look at verse three. Come on, you got your Bibles. Hallelujah. Welcome to the School of Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm Bishop Coletta, Dr. Coletta J. Vaughn. I am a pneumatologist and I teach Holy Spirit all over the world and especially to the body of Christ. Now, look at verse number three, John three and three. Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. Would you circle that? Would you circle that? Would you circle verse three? No one can see, circle that, see the kingdom. Then verse five, no one can enter the kingdom. Now, there's a lot of debate going on in a lot of movements, and this has nothing to do with water baptism, although water baptism is an answer of good conscience to those who love Jesus Christ. So we're not here to debate that part. But what I want you to understand is the language that Jesus is using. Then he says, now the wind blows, verse 8, wherever it pleases, you can hear the sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is for everyone born of Holy Spirit, everyone born of Holy Spirit. Thank you, John J. Pastor John. So here, here's what I want you to hear. Now, born again is absolutely language for the new birth, but there was so much more here that Jesus was introducing to Nicodemus. So what is, when we say the kingdom of God? It is a new world order. The kingdom of God is a government. I need you to hear this. The kingdom of God is the government of God. It is God's system of operation. It is the government of God. Pastor Tawana Stoworth, Juanita Campbell, coming up the timeline. Listen, thank you, Pat Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> So the kingdom of God, Mama Pearl, is, 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 is not us. It's not us. That's the church. And the church is a part or component of the kingdom. All right. It is the government. It's a system. <laughs> It's the system, it's the government, it's the way God operates. Thank you, Pastor Jemison. It is the kingdom or the where, where the king takes over and the domain of the king's 
government. All right? <laughs> work with me, Paula. Uh, work with me. Right? It is God's kingdom. It's his order. Now, woo, Rabaki Oshkata. <laughs> yes, yes. It is the king's kingdom. The king's. Now, we are Western. There are some of you that are on from other domains, and you understand the British system, or you may understand a more local system of kingdom life. Uh, but those of us who are Westernized, we are not so familiar with kingdom conversations or kingdom government because we live in a democracy. And in the democracy, everybody gets a vote in the democracy. Not so in a kingdom. Not so in a kingdom. Language is different because the governmental operation is different. The application of the government is very different from the people and the monarch. So if there is a monarch, a monarchy, there is not a democracy. In the Western world, as of us, Americans, North Americans, and most of the, uh, the world, other than, of course, for those that are under the monarchy, which are, I think they're like 144 nations in the monarchy. So there's quite a bit of oversight. Even I live in Detroit and across the bridge south of Detroit is Canada. And Canada, five minutes away, is international waters. And it is a monarchy, a part of the monarchy. Windsor, Ontario, Canada, Toronto, Montreal, all of those come up under the monarchy of the queen now, the King Charles. And we live only three, 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 three minutes away, literally. So now when you are dealing with a monarchy, when you're dealing with that level of government, you understand the rules, the orders, the protocols, the procedures of the kingdom. Now, one of the things that I love about the monarchy in, in the British monarchy is its rules, its systems, its, its procedures, its policies, the way. It, now, some look at it and say, oh, uh, that's too strict. Oh, that's this. Oh, the queen, uh, before she went home to be with the Lord, oh, the queen runs everything. And some would even say, uh, <laughs> oh, the, that, that, that uh, it is somehow uh, a dictatorship. You know, we, I hear that in the body of Christ. It's just a dictatorship. You know, the church is a dictatorship. He think he, who he think he is. But that is because we believe in a democracy. And when you believe in a democracy, when you are raised in a democracy, in a democratic system where people get a vote, and if they don't want to do something, they can protest or they can um, they can can cannot do it, you know, and suffer the consequences. But they get a vote. They, they get a vote in, in everything. And there are a lot, a lot of people that that believe they should get a vote. They believe that they should have a voice in everything. And we bring that. Uh, we bring that into uh, even the kingdom of God. We bring that into the church, rather. We bring that into um, uh, we bring that into our mindset in the church. We think everybody should have a voice. We think it's a democracy. We live not under a monarch, but we live under a theocracy, a theocracy, where there is a king and there is a kingdom. And there are systems and rules that we are to follow. Now, if you want to participate in the kingdom, if you want to have uh, some level of value, uh, contribution to the kingdom, 
then these rules, these guidelines must be followed. Now, if you read anything about the British monarch, particularly when Queen Elizabeth was alive, they were talking about how certain things couldn't be done if you were going to marry, you could. Now, this is the problem with our Prince Harry and why it is that he is now in the American, the Americas, because uh, once he uh, was married, the, the, some of the more obvious things in which um, the kingdom, the queen wanted done, that had been done all his life, he now has a challenge because his wife was never accustomed to a monarchy, but to a democracy. And so now do I keep the rules and regulations of the kingdom of which I am a prince or my wife who wants more freedom, more liberty, do I follow her? <laughs> Come on, Dr. Patricia Jackson. Uh, I need y'all to hear this. And so good morning, Elder Nettie. Safe travel to those of you uh, that are coming. And so this is the controversy uh, with the new prince, the young prince, and his family. Because once he married outside of the race, if you will, not, not talking about that, I'm talking about the monarchy, the race of, of deity or the race, uh, if you will, of royalty. Once he married outside of the royal race, and this is why, <laughs> uh, Pastor Michael Carver, this is why <laughs> uh, they, they forbid, somebody said, well, the queen, no, that this is a kingdom. This is not a democracy. And, 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 and the king rules don't change because you don't like them, okay? So there is a way you're going to behave. There's a way you're going to operate. There's a way you're going to live. There's a way that, particularly if you're on the throne, you're going to do things the right way. So when he married outside of the royal race, now he has a challenge. Am I going to be the prince of this kingdom? and follow its rules and regulations, possibly lose my wife? Or am I going to follow my wife back into her democracy? Now, he's wealthy enough. You don't have to never worry about money. But he can't be the prince in the UK with the wife that he married. And this is why they forbid you marrying outside of your royal race because you want to introduce a new way and a new system. <laughs> now, thank you, Elder Lottie. This is good. She says, this is why the monarch must approve the marriage to the sixth line of succession. Wow. <laughs> because there has to be a royal bloodline, a royal lineage. Uh, now, Gloria Thomas, amen. It may be that, that that's possibly very true. And I realize that from a Western perspective, uh, their oppression, their wealth, and those things, uh, as they took over certain nations, and even as they took over uh, Afri the Africas and all of those things are true. That's that's true. It's just like slavery is true was true. It's just like uh, 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 the Holocaust is true. Those things are true. But the system is right. The system is good. Now, people will always pervert the system. And I get it. I, I understand it. But I want you to understand that if you are born in it, now, if you are not born in it, then you have to be born again. Meaning, that the, the monarchy can extend to you a citizenship. But the citizenship is predicated on you and your behavior, being, being able to submit to the rules and to the regulations of the kingdom. <laughs> 
And, and so I want you to understand why, even why I'm going this way. Now, when Prince, the the first Prince, the, the uh, what is his first, his name, the, the older boy, he married a young woman named Megan. Megan was a part of the the kingdom, so she understood kingdom behavior, kingdom lifestyles. She was not offended by the rules and the structure. All right. She wasn't offended by that. <laughs> so Harry, thank you, Valerie, Prince Harry, who is in line to his father's, to the throne. We never thought Charles would ever get to the throne, but God, God made it to be so. And he was the firstborn son of the queen who reigned for over 50 years. Now, they can extend, oh, is it William, William and Kate? All right, William and Kate, thank you. Thank you. Harry's the boy I'm talking about that left out because of the girl that he that he married. Right? So Megan is the one that has not received or accepted the kingdom. She did so she cannot see the kingdom. She cannot inherit the kingdom. So what she did instead is that she uh instead she went with the the, the, the Harry went with the wife and came to America to live outside of the boundaries of the authority of the monarchy. Now, I, I, I wanted us to understand that because when we think about um, when we think about it, now when William fell in love with Kate. It was a long time before we all knew, right? But she yielded. She was born again. And she yielded to the regulations and the rules of the monarchy. She dresses like they say dress. She eats like they say eat. She carries herself in a way in which it is that they want her to carry herself. And when you see her, and that this was a problem that Princess Diana had uh, because after a while, because Charles was so awful, uh, after a while, she started saying, I can't, I can't follow these rules. Now, I bring this up to help us to understand the kingdom. So Jesus says, except you are born again, you can't see the kingdom. And except you are born again of spirit and water, you cannot inherit the kingdom. All right? I need us to understand that this is so important. And I want it to go this way to give a larger context of why God gave us Holy Spirit. All right? Now, when we get back to the fact that, okay, uh, this uh, William William and Kate not Harry and Meghan but I want to raise it up so you can see who's following the kingdom and who is not it's so visible it's so it's so it's so visible now if you are not born of the spirit, if you are not born of the spirit, now notice in this text, no blood is mentioned. But if you're not born of water, born of the spirit, the water of the spirit, if you are not born, you will not know that you are even translated into a kingdom. You, you will never know that. You will never know. You'll just think you're in the church. Now, why is this a kingdom? Watch this. To protect succession. To protect succession. To protect the continuity and consistency of its origins. And so this is why we have to be changed 
because God has given us the Holy Spirit to protect the monarchy, to protect the kingdom. I heard something the other day that was so powerful that blew me away. And this preacher was so right. Oh my God, it blew me away. He said, if it were left up to us, we would go back into apostasy. If we did not have Holy Spirit, we would unsave ourselves. Hey, whoa, we would unsave ourselves. If we did not have Holy Spirit, we would unsave ourselves. We would go back into apostasy. It is Holy Spirit that keeps us from falling. If it were up to you, you would deviate from the kingdom's rules and regulations. If it were up to me, I would change. I would ask for a vote and I would modify some of the requirements. If it were up to you with your anointed self, <laughs> with your oil self, which, which you'll know the Bible said, you would modify the Bible. If it were up to you and your personality and your temperament. So we would slip back into apostasy very easily because we don't like rules. We don't like rules. We don't like rules and, and we celebrate. Now this is, this 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 is this is this is uh this is this is an issue that I have. <laughs> I I would just raise my own issue. And I know I hear people say, oh, he followed his wife, oh, he followed his wife, oh, he followed his wife. What a great man of God. What a great man. He went after his wife. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit on that side of that thing. I'm not going to sit on that side of the fence. See, I know that the heart does what the heart wants to do. But you knew the rules. You knew the rules. You knew the rules. And again, your, your mother, you, you know the rules. Said, so, well, Kate was treated differently because of her race. And that may be true. But he knew that. He knew what she was when, she, when he brought her to the palace. Okay? <laughs> so... You know, you, you you grew up in it, so you knew. You already knew, Harry. So I don't know if it is because I view things differently, not through emotions, but I view things through the lens of order. And when you are in succession to the throne, you must follow the guidelines of that kingdom. Ooh. I want us to understand. These are kingdom dynamics. We're very presumptuous as a people. We presume that our way is better. We're very presumptuous. We believe that what we do is right. Now, it may be your truth, but it doesn't mean it's right. Oh, my God. Somebody needs to write that down. <laughs> Just because it's your truth don't mean it's right. And that's their truth. Is it right? No. It's on the wrong side of the thing because you are an heir to a monarch. Now. I want us to understand. I want us to understand this. When we think about now, we are members of the body of Christ. And we now must accept that there is a kingdom that we are now a part of, whether we know it or not. There's some of you that never knew that you are a royal priesthood. There's some of you that have never heard the teaching of being translated into the kingdom of God. There are many of you, somebody wrote it down, Miss Sheba, thank you. Just because it's your truth don't mean it's right. <laughs> well, you need to respect my truth. No, I don't. 
No, I don't. That's your truth. <laughs> I respect that it's your truth, but it doesn't mean it's right. There is a kingdom. There's a right. There's a way that seemeth right. This is why we need Holy Spirit. And so when we think about it, <laughs> so Arnetta says, and I, I want to check, I'm going to check you on this. So hold on. She says, Harry was never going to be king. Maybe that had something to do with his decision. No. See, nobody thought Deanna would die. Nobody thinks about tragedy. Nobody thinks about uh, different things happening. You don't know that. He doesn't know that. But this is what we do as well as believers. We put everything on the line. We will risk anything and everything to have it our way. And so this is why personality and temperament is so fierce. Because what it does, come on now, what it does is that it challenges everything that God wants for us. My personality, your personality, challenges everything God wants for us and tries to make sense of it, tries to justify it. <laughs> and so what we have to do, we have to read, we have to read, think we have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds we have been placed in the kingdom of god we must submit our passions our personalities we must submit all that we are and want to be we must submit to the monarchy or the theocracy in which we have now accepted as our reality oh there will be consequences trust me and don't think that there are not consequences there are consequences and when you applaud that when you support that you are supporting something that is opposite of what was intended for that people you know, <laughs> oh my God, I, I, I don't know if you all understand this. This is so serious. We, we, we have to, they had to make laws to cover that mistake. They had to change things. It was tough even with Charles and Camilla. It was tough. Now you can love who you want to love, but you won't live in this palace. <laughs> Y'all, see, we don't, this is all new to us because we don't live in a kingdom construct. It's all new to us. We just think we Christians just, just rolling around and, and whatever we want to do, we can do it. And uh, we, we just, no, Christ made peace. Christ made peace for you now to accept your royalty. And you're not just a nobody trying to tell somebody about, no, that don't say that. That's not who you are. Christ, by his sacrifice of the blood, has made peace with every enmity, peace with every en enemy. Now, watch this. You don't want to be alienated from God because of your mind. You don't want to be alienated from God because of your personality. You don't want to be alienated from God because of your opinions. You don't want to be alienated from God because of your habits. No, Christ has made peace. He has made peace through the cross, through the blood of Jesus. And then he has given us Holy Spirit. He's given us Holy Spirit to keep us in alignment with what has happened to us. 
Bible says that once, I mean, Colossians chapter number one, that once we were alienated from God and now he has made peace, glory to God, through his blood. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. And now in Christ, we are heirs and joint heirs to the throne. Now we are heirs and joint heirs to the throne. I am a joint heir. I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ to the throne. I am an heir. I'm in the line of succession by the spirit of God. Woo, come on in here, Liberia. Let's go. Let's go. I need you to understand it. So all behavior ain't accepted. All that I want to say and all that I want to do ain't accepted. How I want to live, how I want to behave, it's not accepted. I am an heir and a joint heir to the throne. I have been translated into the kingdom of god i was brought out of darkness come on now watch this i need you to i need you to hear this in colossians 1 let's go there for just a moment colossians chapter number one i, I need you to see this praise god for this reason since the day we heard from you verse 9 we have not stopped praying for you we continually ask god to fill you with the knowledge of his will through the wisdom and understanding that Holy Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious riches so that you might have great endurance and patience. Verse 12, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. I mean, verse 13, Colossians 1, and brought us into the kingdom of the son that he loves in whom we now have redemption and the forgiveness of sins Woo. <laughs> listen here i i'm not just some christian i am in line for the throne i am in succession I have legitimacy. I have succession, apostolic succession, by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, now I have been rescued out of the darkness, out of the dominion of Satan, and I have been translated into the kingdom of God. Did you know you were a kingdom citizen? Did you know that you are a kingdom citizen? Now, unless you are born again in your thinking, unless you are born again in the way that you see this, you will never see the kingdom and you will not inherit the kingdom. Here in the earth, you will not walk in kingdom peace or kingdom joy or kingdom favor. And your growth inhibitor is your personality. Ooh. <laughs> did you know? Somebody said, did you know? Did you know that you are a kingdom citizen? You are a royal priesthood. But what does that mean to you? If you are a royal child, you have you, you them little children, them little royal children, you don't see them acting out. They got nannies. They got housekeepers. They, 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 look, they are taught at an early age, what it means to be an heir. Did you know that you have a, 
uh, uh, access to the kingdom? <laughs> did, did you know? Did you understand? Do you understand? There was there's nothing that you don't have access to because you are a royal priesthood. Now, I want you to go back to Galatians. I wanted to explain this to you because this this is not something that is often taught. <laughs> Baby, them little royal children, they ain't running all over the town. They are in bed at a certain hour. They eat a certain diet. They behave in a certain way. They are not seen out carousing and doing anything that they want to do. <laughs> we don't know what happened to Harry, but they, they, you ain't seen them out drunk, laying in the street, getting arrested. Oh, no. Uh-uh. No. No, them little children is raised. They got nannies and housekeepers and they don't go to no school. The school comes to them. Do you know what you shouldn't be doing? Do you know where you shouldn't be going? Do you know what you shouldn't be saying? Do you know how to behave? No. <laughs> yeah, over here in, in America, in the White House, some, some, sometimes, <laughs> thank God for Sasha and Malia, we, we ain't get no, because you know now that, it, that wasn't going to happen up in there. <laughs> oh, no. Uh-uh, y'all going to be raised right. Uh, Michelle Obama and President Obama, they raised him and she brought her mama with her. No, y'all going to do right. And, 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 and we get into the, the church and think, oh, dictatorship is wrong. I'm, and, and I'm not saying that there should be absolute power. Nobody has absolute power but God. But if, if, the, if the word of God is the final authority, on how we should live in this kingdom. <laughs> oh, my God, my God. Now, we are to live pleasing God. We are to avoid sexual immorality. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. It says, it is God's will that you should be sanctified. Why? Because God is protecting the monarchy. God is protecting succession so it is important oh shy Woo. <laughs> watch this watch this that you control your own body that's food sex gambling drinking that's everything it is important that you control your body oh wow don't nobody want to hear this <laughs> in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like pagans, like commoners who do not know God and that in this matter, no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish those who commit such sins. I'm in verse six. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Good God Almighty. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Good God Almighty. The very God that gives you his Holy Spirit. Mark that in your Bible. I don't have it marked in this new Bible. That we are to live not like commoners, not like pagans. And God has given us his Holy Spirit to keep us from uh, lying in, in waste and eating our own vomit and, and living our own uh, corrupt morals. He has given us his Holy Spirit. So you won't be a jerk. So you won't be whacked. So you won't be on that side. You, listen, he has given you Holy Spirit. So you don't have anger issues. So you're not stubborn. So you're not rebellious. He has given you Holy Spirit. So you don't stay grieving for years. He has given you Holy Spirit. 
so that you can protect the throne that your behavior your conversations your responses the way you handle things that is always royal hallelujah it's always royal now we don't get like that overnight it's a process but enjoy the process go with the process just because it's happening don't mean it's right and stop protecting evil stop protecting wrong stop aligning yourself with wrong if it's bad behavior it's bad behavior it doesn't matter who it is stop protecting that stop making that right with your actions you know you see a friend and or you see a family member and you see them and you say well you know that's that's my friend you know i gotta go with my friend no no you don't you're not protecting the monarch you're not protecting the throne you're not protecting the palace you're not protecting the kingdom when you do that we do things out of emotions out of our personality out of our temperaments and we don't think how is this going to impact the kingdom who stop protecting evil stop being on the side where well you know i understand and i how you know they treat her wrong and that don't don't be on that side understand what's at stake oh, God. Uh, i am near shabazz uh yes god has called us from uncleanness to holiness don't be on the side just because it's your family don't be wrong because your family wrong take a stand for right go up to the school these te- these parents come up in there and they want to beat the teacher up and fuss with the teacher and cut the teacher and shoot the teacher and your kid is wrong don't be on the side of wrong be on the side of right and stay on the side of right parents if your child is wrong your child is wrong don't don't justify that don't defend that say my child is wrong my child is wrong and i'm not standing with my child my child is wrong come on now you wives you gotta say it to your husbands honey you're wrong husbands you gotta say it to your wife baby i don't think that's right we gotta say it to our children i don't care how old they get baby that ain't right we got to be on the right side of this thing because we are heirs to the throne now go back to galatians and i'm almost done here my god are y'all learning anything if you're learning say i'm learning if you're learning say i'm learning say i'm learning i'm learning something be accountable be righteous don't be on the side of wrong because it's your family don't be on the side of wrong because it's your 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 friend don't be on the side of wrong i'm learning are you learning are you learning put some stop protecting wrong and when you see it and it's wrong don't call it right Ooh, <laughs> If you understood the kingdom, you would understand what's happening. Now watch this in Galatians 5. Watch this. It said the acts of the flesh are obvious. So we, we're dealing with the flesh. We're at the acts of the flesh, which is your personality, are such. Here they are. Ooh, Rabbi Kai, you're learning something. Put it, put it in the chat. Come on, IG. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Felicia. Listen here. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, that's keeping up a fuss. Idolatry, that's idolizing yourself, your ways, your opinion, your perspectives, your your way. I saw something uh, Ruthie put in there about when we were growing up in our households. Our family, we didn't, my daddy, there were certain things we couldn't do because we were Lewis's. My daddy said, that don't go on up in this house. <laughs> Woo, I'm so good at joy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Hallelujah. Watch this. Jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Watch this. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this, here's that language, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Ooh, 
See, we don't understand kingdom. We don't live by kingdom principles. We try to live by church rules. We don't, we, we don't, we don't live by kingdom principles. Because in America, we have such a voice. We have such a vote. We want to express our opinion. We want, and it's nothing wrong unless it's wrong. Now, listen to this, listen to this. So when we are dealing with a person who is operating out of their personality, not operating out of the spirit, you will inevitably break kingdom rules. Somebody write that down. <laughs> Come over here. Look here. Look here. Look here. Woo! My God. My God. We don't. We don't realize that our our lives are tied to God in Christ. That we are connected by Holy Spirit. And when my personality drives my life, when my personality drives my decision when my personality drives my behavior i will inevitably break kingdom rules i'm gonna break kingdom protocols and for a brief moment i may even forget that i'm an heir to the throne for a brief moment i gotta get up to when i when i get done huh we forget we forget, we forget that we are kingdom citizens. There, there was, there was a uh, when, when, when the, when the casinos were first built here in the city. We have cousins that, that are professional gamblers, and we went to, to the thing, and, and uh, we took them there, and my, my cousin won all kinds of money. She gave some money to the church. Praise God, <laughs> Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. Holy Spirit spoke to me so clearly. I said, don't you ever call me anything like this again. Now, you can go. You can watch. But you putting money in the slot? You, you pulling that? You? You? No, not you. Because you don't live by gambling. You live by tithing. I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's certain things that Holy Spirit will check you on. That you may or may not feel something is wrong with it. But because you are an heir to the kingdom, do you think that God wants it to be said that you got your wealth from gamble? You think that's a good look for the kingdom? Do you really believe that God wants you to be known as the richest person in your city because you hit the lottery? I'm not talking, come on, stay woke. Now, I'm not talking about people that are unsaved and don't have Holy Spirit and they hit the lottery and they bring it to the church of God. Praise the Lord. No, I'm talking about the kingdom citizens. I'm talking about are you led by Holy Spirit? And so, I'm telling you, Holy Spirit checked me, so he checked me. Holy Spirit checked me so tough. I said, don't you ever pull, a, pull another arm. Don't you ever put another nickel in another machine. Not you. You don't live by gambling. You live by tithing. Have I not given you everything you needed? Have I not provided day after day? I am a good provider. You are in the kingdom and you shall not want. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. I got to go. I, I tell you the truth. My God, my God, don't you ever be in this position again. I said, but Lord, uh, it ain't in the Bible. You know how we do. I said, this ain't got nothing to do with that. This has to do with the kingdom. This has to do with the kingdom. You are an heir to the kingdom of God. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You sit in the same position as Jesus sits in this kingdom. 
And this kingdom does not operate on gambling. This, this kingdom operates on tithing and sowing. I said, Lord, I'll never, I'll never, I'll never. You know, you in Vegas, can't nobody see you, right? <laughs> so you go through the airport, you put, I put a dime in. Holy Spirit said, no, you, no, you don't. No, you don't. We don't think that our personalities and our temperaments are ever wrong. We think we're right no matter what we do. We think we're right no matter what we say. But not as an heir of the kingdom of God. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Elite. I may do that. My God, listen. You have a throne. You have a kingdom. You have a king. And let's live like it. Let's submit these personalities that we might inherit the kingdom of God. I got to go. I love y'all. Share this on your pages. Oh my God, I got to go. I hate it when I have to do this. But Lord, my God, the tap goes so fast. But I want you to be born of the spirit so you can see the kingdom today. Hey, have a good one. <laughs> Woo, glory to God.